Hey guys, welcome, bringing you a general reading for the collective of Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. My readings are generally not date or time specific. Um, I trust that whenever you come upon it, if it resonates, if it's aligned with your experience, then it may be your message at that time. Um, but we do have things going on in the cosmos, so I do like to share it with you so that you're just aware of what the energies are that may be finding their way into the reading at the time that I'm conducting it. So we are uh, just days away from Mercury stationing retrograde. Um, it's kind of between Taurus and Gemini. It's a quick trip through Taurus, and then most of the retrograde is in Gemini, where Mercury is very happy, but that's all about the realm of thought. Um, it's like a double dose, right? Because Mercury is always going to be about our thinking process, um, you know, communication, thoughts, perceptions, even technology. That's why, you know, all those realms of connectedness from intellect and reasoning and logic, all of that usually gets impacted no matter where he retrogrades. But in the sign he rules or one of them, um, it's like a double whammy. So just be aware um, from the end of April, the 26th is when I believe it's the 24th, 5th or 6th is when the pre-shadow phase began. And that all the way up to the 10th is the territory that will be covered, right? So whatever has been coming up for you these past couple of weeks, you know, maybe even make a note about it because when he goes retrograde, he's going to go back over that. So that's like the second pass. Then he's going to turn around and go back over it a third time. That's why they're difficult um, energies to deal with. So I just wanted to make you aware of that. And then five days later, we have the full moon in Scorpio with the um, total lunar eclipse. So this will close out this eclipse wormhole, which began with the new moon in Taurus. Um, and right, but the energies will kind of carry forward for about the next six months. I just wanted to let you know, you may really want to focus on what you'd like to permanently release, energetically release. Scorpio is, right, the death card. Death, rebirth, regrowth, um, growth, change, transformation. So be giving that a lot of thought. Um, other than that, hey, for those who are mommies, happy Mother's Day. And for those who miss their mommies, like yours truly, I'm sending you lots of love and an extra gentle hug. Um, but I did want to mention that. So here we go, Libra. Um, pulled a card from, and you could be here as a cross watcher. That's absolutely fine. Sometimes the the messages come through directly for a cross cross watcher. Also, remember you can flip the energies around in the tarot reading if you need to. But you got card thirty seven. I'm pulling from Sacred Rebels. Love this deck. Um, it's a lot of information though. So what I do is I pre shuffle, I select, and then I pull out what I think is the most salient points. You got card 37, three and seven is 10, and the 10, the zero drops off and it resets to a one. So we've got a completion here and a new beginning, and the message is so powerful. It's focus on the light. Focus on the light, Libra. So what this is telling you is there is a tremendous force of light gathering around you. Um, magic kind of wants to happen for you, uh, so, for example, synchronicities, perfect timing, opportunities, um, information that may be needed, all those things that just kind of appear out of nowhere in the perfect time, um, that's going to seem to be drawn your way almost effortlessly. And so you want to focus on the light. Now, there were other passages in here that were just so powerful that I felt the need to share. So I'm going to just read two of them. It says here, it's best to stay focused on your pure heart and intentions. Just allow all else to happen of its own accord without making it mean anything too personal. Simply let it be the workings of the great light of love flowing through a pure heart and touching the world. I know, that makes me want to cry. And the second thing it says is this oracle also brings you another message. Don't be distracted by other paths around you at this time as you are too close to succeeding on the one you are on now. Love that. So whatever path you're walking right now, Libra, especially the Libra sun signs, um, right, don't let anybody pull you off your path because you're on the right one and you're super close to this pinnacle moment, which could even come with this upcoming eclipse. Just wanted to say, all right, so let's get into your connection here. 
I'm doing my split soulmate spread. I will pull the cards and then I will walk you through it. Oh, hold on. Let me make sure. Yes, phones on vibrate. <laughs> Poor Virgo. Uh, my two family members are on emergency bypass. So text messages, phone calls from them are going to come through, whether it's on silent, vibrate, whatever. Um, and poor Virgo got slammed. <laughs> with ding, 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 ding. I have since spoken to said family members and they know better now. Okay, so, okay. Wow. This is how you're, you're all showing up in the reading. I'll go through it in a minute. Yes. All right, Libra looking good. Yes, Libra, focus on the light. There is so much light in this reading. Beautiful, beautiful light. What's on the bottom? King of Wands. Okay, so the King of Wands can, um, can represent an energy of knowing what you want and claiming it. If it's just coming through as an energy, it's about that staking your claim to the success that's coming your way or whatever it is that you know you're now focused on it could be that it can also represent a person somebody that now is very clear about what they want and since these readings are relationship oriented could could also just be referring to um an aries tour uh aries sag aries leo sag person so it could be just that as well could also be the object of your desire. So you got all the interpretations, but let me show you all the light cards here because I'm really blown away by all the cards that reference light. Right? Focus on the light. Ace of Pentacles is that, that one right 10 becoming one the star is light the ace of cups is light and abundance and joy and the sun is my gosh the father load of light and success and um accomplishment both these cards are beautiful energies around accomplishment um no this was here and this was here so what I want to say is that I'm going to uh, be talking about this as the Libra energy. It doesn't have to be. It can be reversed, so don't sweat it if it is. But that's my, that's my way of structuring the reading. But this person who's coming in here is coming through kind of as a newbie. There's something, they're taking steps in a new direction or um, in a situation that's kind of foreign to them. And they're taking a first tentative step forward. They, there may be a lot they need to learn. And so they're kind of coming in with that youthful, less evolved energy, like, okay, this is different. I'm going to have to explore it deeper. But look at their experience of the connection in the present energy, Ace of Pentacles. This little page is carrying an Ace of Pentacles, which represents a very big offer. It can represent commitment. It can represent an up-leveling. It can represent... Um, you know, uh, just sort of an energy of what you mean to them. So it, it is 3D, mostly 3D, but there is energetic association with like, you mean the world, even though it's not the world card. It's very similar to the new beginnings offered in the world card. So that's where they're at. In the past, man, something went wrong because they've have regrets in the past and going forward, there is the star. So I'll have to clarify to see um, if this is about a wish being granted, right? They're keeping hope alive. They're gonna be um, counting on the universe to sort of have all the planets align in their favor or if there might be some healing um, coming up. So we'll look at that. Here you are showing up in this beautiful Ace of Cups. I love that we have two aces here, um, both of which speak to abundance, which is really powerful. But for some reason, Libra, you're all up in your head. Surprise, surprise. So <laughs> I say that with love and affection. I have like a stillium in Libra in my chart, third house. Um, Eight of Swords is stuck energy. It's overthinking. It's kind of getting in your own way. It can be self-doubt so now that you're sort of all focused on the light here 
the light and the love that you're looking for, um, uh, there's that moment of overthinking, of second guessing, of self-doubt and questioning. But surrounding that card are two really beautiful cards. We have the sun in the past and we have the lovers in the future. And the lovers is a card of choice. It is a card of union or reunion for some. Um, it is, you know, is referencing a beautiful spiritual connection. Could be with this king of wands. So let's go ahead and see what comes through for the, oh, look, lovers is on the bottom. Page of Pentacles. Yes. So this person is seeking a second chance. They're kind of being <laughs> very, um, uh, what's the word for that? When somebody is very tentative, you know, they're being a little coy, um, right? Because something went wrong. They have regret about it. They know that something didn't come off the way they wanted or got away from them somehow, but this is a card of mistakes of the past, regrets of the past, a sense of loss, um, even grief or sadness. So this is what they're seeking is redemption, second chances, possibly forgiveness, but most importantly, reunion. So I love that um, there. Let's go ahead and see if I get any more clues on that. This is divine masculine energy here. So we have that, uh, yeah. They're ready for their happily ever after. This is what's driving them, since I'm pulling from under the deck for those who are new. Hello, welcome. Um, when I pull from under the deck, it's just what's going on in the recesses of someone's mind, in the psyche, basically, or behind the scenes, um, outside of conscious awareness for this person, but maybe outside of your awareness. So I feel this person is um, very much in consideration of the love they feel and really kind of wanting to um, have that moment of bliss. I've got... A sense that this person is ready to commit um, but they've got to take that first step toward making whatever it is that went wrong right yeah and they're being a little sheepish that was the word I wanted to use for the page of Venegals I know it's funny it's a cute word they're a little sheepish I could really like this person to forgive me I'd really want to come back together and, you know, build this happy life. And if this is triggering you already, it just may not be your reading. Um, so keep that in mind. This is for people who are like, yeah, things went wrong, but we are all human and don't harbor ill feelings toward this person. Not sure I'm ready for second chances, but I'm open to seeing what comes through energetically in the reading. So that's who these readings are for. Five of Cups. Oh, wow. All right. So Danger Will Robinson. We had conflict. I think they tried to um, smooth it out, but it didn't work. Five of um, Cups with the Five of Wands, followed by the Six of Swords underneath this Page of Wands. I feel like this person stepped in it somehow and maybe said something off the cuff. Page of Wands, Pages or Messengers, maybe something. Um, I'll give you an example. You're in the energy of all this beautiful happiness and you're seeing the potential of feeling safe and vulnerable with somebody, right? Safe safe in your vulnerability with them is kind of what I meant to say. And they come out with some kind of like sexual quip. <laughs> like, a, <laughs> I'm only laughing because it happens like a bazillion times a day. And then like all holy hell breaks loose and tempers fly and there's this conflict. Like, what are you just... You just want the sex? Like, is that what we've got going on here? And like, this person doesn't know how to, <laughs> how to get it back, how to get the train back on the rails. And so things kind of fall apart. So that's what I feel like I see here in the past for this person. They probably tried to smooth things out, but it was inartful at best. Um, and now they're kind of like, no, I don't just see you as my personal plaything. I want 
to commit. I want to offer you something more, but uh, this is like all new territory for me. So I'm just going to start with apologies and hope that you forgive me. And like stepping into the role of the divine masculine is no small shakes and it's kind of knee knocking territory for a page of pentacles. But make no mistake, the page of pentacles is offering something very tangible. They may be starting small, but they are thinking big. Okay. Ace of Pentacles. Yes, they're, oh my God. Oh, somebody here is like sitting there right now going, nailed it, nailed it, nailed it, right? Because it's, I'm seeing like they're trying to get their nerve up. They're trying to get their nerve to come in and, you know, make some kind of offer of commitment. Like, all right, we're a thing, we're an item. It's you and me <laughs> together forever the end, right? So I feel like they're kind of trying to get their nerve up. The strength card there is very sweet. Yes, and they are making an ardent and passionate return. Question is, you know, will they have the staying power? The Ace of Pentacles is the lead card. It's from the main part of the spread. These are just clarifiers. Yeah, this person is A, getting their nerve up to come back, and B, creating a plan to stay. But they're sheepish. <laughs> and look what's on the bottom, guys. Right, so... Do not tell me you are not mirroring each other. I mean, both of those are present energy. So this person knows you may be um, the love of a lifetime, and they don't want to lose that opportunity for sure. Who, guys, my goodness. Yes, because now they know what it is they want. Yes. Star. Two of Swords, High Priestess, Queen of Swords. Okay, so the Two of Swords to me speaks to, I'm in this energy of wishing, wishing for something really big, really big. I just don't know how to make it happen. I don't know the best approach. And remember, this person hasn't come to you yet for most of you. Some of you, maybe it has, and you're going, oh my God, this happened like a month ago. But for the vast majority of you, this is, this is unfolding now and um, moving forward. And so they're going to be in this, you know, hope and wishing on a star kind of energy, but they're not going to know exactly how to approach a situation. So they're going within for clarity. They may be you know, um, operating on intuition, the high priestesses here can also represent that you may not be in communication at all. There's no talking with the high priestess. So it may be that this person gets stuck up in a little bit of a fogginess in terms of how they're going to proceed, how they're going to move forward if you're not in communication. Okay. Um, and then underneath is the queen of swords. Could also be that they want to anticipate with that two of swords that they're thinking through all the questions you may have, Queen of Swords, or perhaps being concerned that you may not give them the opportunity to speak. So all these things are running through, going to be running through this person's mind if they haven't already, um, but they're not giving up hope, which is what I really like here. Whew, that feels so good. Okay, so let's look at the Ace of Cups for you. I know, I can feel it, okay? Because, yeah, so we have the Ace of Cups with Temperance, and this is perfect, because the Temperance card is about self-control and restraint. You know, not kind of riding the highs and lows, just sort of waiting for all the energies to come into flow and balance. It is a card of balance, it is a card of patience. But it's the wisdom that's important with the temperance card. It's the wisdom to know that with patience in time, all energies do come into flow and balance eventually. So I know that you're counting on this, that you're feeling the energy of the Ace of Cups and 
you know, for some of you, you may be wanting somebody totally new, but, you know, I'm saying that because I see the three of swords here, right? So in a way, for some of you, you may be just like, I just got to ride this out. I just got to take the time that's needed to heal from the broken heart. But then here comes the two of cups underneath. So we know you're thinking about somebody. We know you're holding a very powerful energetic connection at soul level in your mind and in your heart. And so I kind of feel like the temperance is, is you buying yourself the time, you realizing the wisdom to know that, yeah, my heart will heal. It's just going to take time. It's just going to take a little time. Who my. So let's see the sun in the past. Okay. Um, I think you were very determined. Very determined. Very determined to find your happiness. Um, this energy coming in with the Six of Wands, probably like after this conflict, whatever happened here, you both kind of wanted some form of reconciliation. You were both in that Six energy of moving to calmer waters and reconciling differences. I don't know why it didn't happen. Um, it could have been a little, little power struggle, dare I say, King and Queen of Wands. Um, but I definitely feel like you were very much empowered with very clear on what you wanted in terms of the happiness you desired, seeking out some form of a win-win scenario in the relationship. I don't think you got it. And that's what I think you're healing from. That, that heartache, that disappointment. So let's look at the Eight of Swords, present energy. In the connection, <laughs> Page of Pentacles. Oh my, my, my. Yeah, you're very mirrored strong mirrored energy here um i almost feel like the doubt here the self-doubt is less about you and more about them like stay with me libra like we got the Ace of Cups and the Temperance card. And the Ace of Cups is pretty powerful. And the Temperance is like, yeah, I gotta give this time, you know, I gotta heal my broken heart, but I also have the wisdom to know that things, things can probably be repaired, right? Things, everything can come back into flow and balance. And then you're having this moment of, I don't know if they can pull it off. <laughs> I don't know if my page can become a king. Like, this is new territory for them. Can they go from the Page of Pentacles to the King of Pentacles, someone who shows up for you in 3D? I'm here to tell you they can. And that's the process that they're going through right now, the growth process they're going through right now. I mean, they're going from the Page to the Ace. They're just trying to get their nerve up to come back. <laughs> I feel your doubt is not about you. I feel it's about them. And underneath is the Hermit. And I feel like in this way, that's your inner guide, right? That's where you go to kind of um, confer with yourself, your own inner wisdom, based on your own life experience and all the times you've spent on your own, um, you know, solitary journey energy is coming through with the hermit, but it's also a guide, a wise guide. And because it's underneath, it's almost like, I got the angel and the devil. I've got the hermit saying, you know, everyone's capable of, capable of learning and growing. You have done so, so can they. But you're leading with this Eight of Swords, which is like, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know I don't know that they can. And it's kind of keeping you stuck because uh, your doubt that's creeping in um, is really about what they're able to pull off. So let's look at the lover's card oh my god this is the greatest reading
It's, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So focus on the light here. Honest to goodness. This was the perfect card for you for this part of your journey. Something really powerful is coming. Choosing each other, choosing the relationship, choosing a conventional committed relationship, right? Something more stable and grounded with a future. We've got the Knight of Cups here. They come with their heart wide open and you both get to offload all this difficult, heavy energy. I love the Ten of Wands because it's almost like where you finally say, okay, I don't, I, I don't have to stay up all in my head, worrying about doubting my worthiness, doubting what this person, you know, whether or not they really feel the same way I do, blah, blah. Nope, nope, you're gonna offload all of that. And I do feel this person returns with an open heart. I see it playing out here. I think they're gonna get momentarily stuck with that two of swords. It's a little bit of energy. Like, let me be really, really clear on not just the meaning and purpose of a decision, but how to proceed. So I feel the decision is being made now. It's how to proceed where they're gonna be calling in the guidance of the cosmos right and operating on intuition because you may not be speaking and they're also going to be really taking into consideration whether or not you're even going to give them an opportunity to clear the air okay so great energy coming through let me tell you what i am doing when i go to the extended and i'm going to tell you all the energies that showed up in a second when i go to the extended what i do is i for this particular spread is i just push it up on the table so i'm using all this same stuff and then i just pull the two of you together so i do a new reading where i pull the two of you together i look at your messages to and from each other what are you trying to communicate at 5d or what are they picking up from you what vibe are they getting that's always very interesting. Um, I also pull a card from Spirit of the Universe for guidance or you know, any kind of um, direction or advice. Uh, hidden energy, something going on behind the scenes you may not know about but probably should or might want to. And then the outcome position, what can you expect going forward? Um, and I also pull some additional oracle to close out the reading. So the, the extents are just as extensive as these readings here. So that's a link for that is below. But here's who showed up. We have Judgment is Scorpio. That's a card of Pluto. The Emperor is Aries. Uh, we have the Strength card is Leo. The Knight of Wands is Sagittarian Energy. The Star is Aquarius. The High Priestess is Pisces. Queen of Swords can be Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. That's why I think it's you over here. Temperance is Sagittarian Energy. The Sun is Leo. The um, Nine of Pentacles and that Hermit are both Virgo cards, by the way. Um, King and Queen of Wands, Aries, Leo, Sag, uh, King of Pentacles, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. The Lovers is Gemini. Hierophant is Taurus. So really beautiful reading, Libra. Such a pleasure to do. The link to the extent is below, so I'll see you there in a second. Otherwise, stay well, and I'll see you in a future reading. Bye for now.